Hey folks, Ms. Gosling here. In this video, you're going to be learning about forces and Newton's laws. By the end of the video, you will be able to give examples of Newton's three laws of motion in action. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? So let's go ahead and start by defining a force. So we can define a force as a push or a pull. And on this page, I have a few examples of these pushes and pulls. So some of them are very obvious. So for example, we could talk about you physically pushing a cart of boxes or pulling on a rope in a game of tug of war. However, the rest of these, uh, these examples are a little less obvious. So for example, in this video, this image here, I have the table pushing up on my pineapple in what I call the normal force or Fn. Next, I have a picture of the moon going around the earth. And this is of course going to be the gravitational force, F sub G. The rest of these image, images are even more esoteric and we actually aren't even gonna be getting to them, um, to a couple of them until next year. So up in this right corner, we have an example of the electric force with lightning. Um, and we kind of can combine that with magnetism to create our electromagnetic force since the two are interrelated. Um, these we'll be talking about at the end of the year. So they're not gonna play into this unit so much. We also have examples um, of, for example, the strong and weak nuclear force, which we won't even get into until next year. So there are a lot of different forces out there. So let's talk about how we can categorize. So one way to think about forces is to separate between contact forces and non-contact forces. So a contact force is a force that requires physical contact to be felt. So for example, if I make a, a gesture in the air, I'm not gonna knock anything over. But if I make a gesture in the air and knock into my glass, pushing my glass, then I am going to be applying a force to it and it's going to fall over. So some examples of contact forces are the normal force, which is the force between is the force perpendicular to a surface. So one good example of the normal force is the force that is stopping you from falling through whatever you're sitting on right now. So your bed or a chair or a table or the floor, the normal force between that and you is stopping you from falling to the ground right now. Um, we can talk about applied forces, which is any force that you or I apply to something. So for example, me pushing, into the, me pushing over my water glass is an example of an applied force. Friction is gonna be the force per, uh, parallel to a surface. And friction is why when you toss something across the ground, it eventually comes to a stop instead of continuing to move on forever. We can talk about the spring force, which is any force due to a spring. And finally, we can talk about tension, which is gonna be the force due to a string or rope. Now, one thing to think about with tension is that tension is gonna be kind of due to that tightness in the string. So if I just tie a string to a pen and just leave it, then that's not tension. But if I tie that string to my car and use the that string to pull my car, then I am using the force of tension to pull my car along. So contact forces are very common. You could tell I've already listed off five that you probably recognize. Non-contact forces, on the other hand, are a little less common. And by a little less common, I mean the only non-contact forces that we know of are the four that I've listed here. Gravity, the electromagnetic force, the strong force, and the weak force. You have already learned about gravity, so you should know what that is. Um, gravity is, of course, going to be that force of attraction between masses. We can, you've also probably heard of the electromagnetic force, which is going to be the force of attraction or repulsion between charges. Um, you'll notice here that electricity and magnetism are combined into one force, and that is because they are very closely related. So after the, electromagnetic, so after the gravity and the electromagnetic force, we have two forces you are probably less familiar with. That is the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force. These two forces we will not be talking about this year. 
um, but they are going to be the focus of our quantum mechanics and nuclear physics unit in IB Physics 2. So for those of you who will be continuing on, you will get to learn all about the strong and weak nuclear forces. The most important thing to, thing to know about those is that they really only work on that subatomic level. So our strong nuclear force keeps the nucleus together, and our weak nu nuclear force is the cause, or is kind of responsible for a lot of nuclear decay. So anywho, this has been your introduction to forces. Let's go ahead now and talk about Newton's laws, because Newton's laws are what connect forces to motion. So let's go ahead and get started. So Newton's first law is the law of inertia, or as I sometimes like to call it, the law of balanced forces. And Newton's first law states that an object in motion stays in motion, and an object at rest stays at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced outside force. So what this means is that my bucket over here is gonna stay standing still unless I do something to it, like push it over. Similarly, if I take this bucket and I take it out to space um, where there's no gravity and no friction and I throw it, my bucket will keep moving in the same direction with the same speed forever unless some other force acts on it. So that is that first part of our statement, the object, at rest in, the object in motion stays in motion and an object at rest stays at rest. Let's look at the second half. Unless acted upon by an unbalanced outside force. So when I say unbalanced, I mean that there is no other force acting on that object. So, there's, so the sum of the forces would have to not equal zero for that force to be unbalanced. So for example, I have this full bucket of water. And that bucket of water is sitting on the ground, say. And we know that gravity is going to be acting on that bucket. Because guess what? Gravity is acting on every single mass as long as it is on Earth. However, my bucket is not going to accelerate as long as it's on a surface. And that is because the normal force of that surface is going to stop it from falling over. So as long as my forces are balanced, my bucket is going to stand still. Now, let's look at the second part of my statement. Outside force. So my bucket is made up of a bunch of atoms. Which of course are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. We know that within an atom, there is an electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force. Um, so we have, so sorry, we know we have the electromagnetic force that is keeping your, my atom, is keeping my electron moving around my nucleus. We also know that the strong nuclear force is stopping my nucleus from exploding. However, every single atom of water in the bucket, every single atom or every single molecule of water in the bucket, every single atom in whatever, we'll say maybe iron that's making this bucket up, is a part of the bucket. So those forces that are happening within those atoms are not outside forces because they're inside my bucket. So they are not gonna cause any change in my bucket's motion. My bucket is going to continue to stand still no matter what its electrons decide to do. So that is Newton's first. Now. One common misconception is that if no forces are acting on an object, that object will eventually slow down and come to a stop. This is wrong, because if there are no forces acting on an object, that object is going to continue mo moving with constant motion. So again, if I throw my baseball in space, it is going to continue to move with a constant velocity unless somebody decides to catch it. So Newton's second law is what I like to call the law of unbalanced forces. So Newton's first law was talking about what happens when our forces are all, are all equaling out, are all canceling each other out. The second law is what happens when they don't. So Newton's second law says that force is equal to mass times acceleration. So when a force acts on a mass, it causes that mass to accelerate. 
Another important thing to know is that the greater your mass is, so when mass goes up, we need more, a greater force to cause the same acceleration. So one way to think about this is if I apply a force to this toy truck, the toy truck is probably gonna move. However, if I were to apply the same force to an actual truck, a semi, um, that truck is of course probably not gonna have any motion change. And that is because the mass of my toy truck is so much smaller than the mass of my real truck. So again, force acts on mass, mass accelerates. The bigger the mass, the more force you need to cause any kind of motion. Finally, we have Newton's third law. Newton's third law is often called the action-reaction law. I like to think of it a little bit more as the law of reciprocity. So the action-reaction law is often stated as every action has an equal and opposite reaction. I hate that statement. I think it's really misleading. Um, one, another way to think about it might be that every force has an equal and opposite force. So for example, this young kid here is pulling on my brick wall. And he's pulling on the brick wall with a force of 500 newtons. So he's applying that tension force of 500 newtons to the wall. He is also going to feel that same force of 500 newtons. So the, the equal and opposite force is he is going to pull with 500 newtons on that wall and that wall is gonna pull on him with 500 newtons. Perhaps more, a little bit of a more obvious way to think about this is if you and an elephant are playing tug of war, you are both going to be feeling, you are both pulling with the same amount of force. However, you are probably gonna fall over and the elephant will probably be perfectly fine because your mass is so much less. So because of Newton's second law. So all these three laws are very clearly reacting to each other. So one common misconception about Newton's third law is that gravity's equal and opposite force is the normal force. And I can see why you might think that, right? So if you're standing on the ground, gravity is pulling you down, the normal force is pulling you up, and we know that they must be equal and they must be opposite because you're not falling through the ground. But the actual equal and opposite force to the Earth's gravitational pull on you, so the force of the Earth on you, is your gravitational pull on the Earth. So one thing that's pretty cool is that you are pulling on the Earth with exactly as much force as the Earth is pulling on you. However, you are going to be the one to accelerate much more than the Earth does because the Earth has a much greater mass than you do. So even though the force is the same, you are, of course, going to fall a lot more noticeably and a lot more quickly than the Earth will. So let's talk takeaways. First of all, a force is a push or a pull. Most forces are contact forces, but the four fundamental forces are not. And those four fundamental forces are, of course, gravity, the electromagnetic force, the strong force, and the weak force. So our second takeaway is that unbalanced forces cause objects to accelerate. And our third takeaway is that all forces have an equal and opposite pair. It's equal and opposite force has the same name, and this should be without that apostrophe there, it should just be its. So what that means is that the equal and opposite force of my applied force on a table is the table's applied force on me. The equal and opposite force of, my, of the table's normal force on my computer is my computer's normal force on the table. And the equal and opposite force of the Earth's gravitational pull on me is my gravitational pull on the Earth. So there you have it, folks, a nice introduction to Newton's laws and forces in general.